In this series of shorts, we follow 15 ordinary people on an extraordinary journey through Africa. In the ultimate test this summer, our participants fish in the Atlantic Ocean, sleep rough in the desert, fetch their own water, and confront the harsh truths about their home country's history in this continent. For many people in Africa, bread is their only meal of the day. Known locally as mburu, it's traditionally eaten for breakfast between 8 and 11. Anyone who's experienced Senegal's bakeries will tell you the country's bread game is on point. Today the team has arrived at a bakery near the southern village of Kurg Senege. The smell of freshly baked baguettes is already in the air from an earlier batch, but it could easily be from a previous era. Senegal's French colonial past whiffs through the place like dust in the air. The Dakaroy Street breakfast is a nod to the French, who occupied Senegal until 1960. It's a long, skinny loaf spread with butter or a peanut chocolate spread, and you can get it wrapped up in paper for about 100 Senegalese francs. In the south of the country, you'll find bakeries making tapalapa, a local loaf made with harder flour. You'll need a good level of upper body strength to be able to lean in and knead this dough. Local bakers Amadou and Alpha prepare the dough with such ease it seems they've been doing this all their lives. They've had to learn how to become efficient as a thousand odd villagers rely on their bakery for bread. Demand might be high but Amadou and Alpha can only produce about half the bread needed. At just 600 loaves produced each day, they know there'll be a large chunk of their customers turned away. I want to have a go, you know, that one has that stuffing it. Yeah. Make egg well. Looking on, the team are amazed at the effort these men have to put in, devoid of machinery to help knead such strong dough. This is uh, the old-fashioned way to make bread, so it was very interesting for me to see uh, how, how, how with the, the few materials and the few elements they have, they can, make such, they can make such a good bread. It was actually very, very good. So um, it was very interesting to see, um, to see how the oven was built, uh, how, many, how much time the, the, braise, the breads take to, to, to be ready. And uh, with such a few equipments, uh, the, um, the person who was in charge of the bakery managed to, to, to make um, a lot of bread per day, so I was very impressed to see, to see that. It's a tough job, but get it right and you'll have a denser, chewier textured loaf. And unlike the Dakar baguette or the brown speckled pan mier, tapalapa won't go stale for hours. It's good, huh? Very nice. Even though it wasn't, you know, like a, a proper bakery, it was amazing, you know, that they, they make the bread there and they feed everyone there and mashallah the bread, it was, it was so nice. I was expecting, to tell you the truth, when I was going to the bakery, I was expecting this really big bakery and this production line. I don't know why I was thinking. <laughs> when I went to the bakery, I realised it was nothing like that. It was open, it was small, it was you know, hot with a little clay oven. I thought I would maybe get a chance to, to make some bread and to experience how the... Watching them, it made me realise how, um, how hard it is to produce bread in such horrible conditions. Bakery was something that was quite amazing. Uh, they had their own hand-built clay oven and uh, we were, they actually showed us and me and Shireen actually together were making the, the baguettes. Uh, and yeah, that was it. We made it, rolled it up and threw it in the clay oven. So yeah, that's probably going to be the next Greggs of uh, Senegal. Tomorrow on Selfies in Africa, the team are spooked by a visit to the local witch doctor. But what's got Naeem so intrigued?